there's any questions about that. I'll answer any questions for you. Uh, front row right here, Austin. Urban, there was uh, some confusion when you looked at the, the drug and alcohol policy on Saturday. At least I had a hard time reading it. Is it correct to read it that JT did not need to be suspended and you chose to suspend him? Uh, that's correct. Uh, it counts, as, I believe, as a positive, and that would be his first. There's no punishment. The counseling, he has to do counseling and uh, uh, some other things through the university, and that will be done. And so how did you arrive at, at, at the one game? Well, unfortunately, it's nice. I had one several years back, and we did it for a game. Uh, I try to collect as many facts as I can about what actually happened. I meet with a player. I meet with Gene Smith. Um, obviously, a very serious one. And then uh, from the conclusion, we had one game. He's also losing a scholarship. He forfeited a scholarship for a term. You know, I've done that before. The last issue we had like this, and it wasn't quite as serious. It was like the New York thing, and they lost their scholarship. So when a kid has an issue like that, there's some type of punitive damage as far as uh, missing a game or something, and then they forfeit their scholarship at some point. They can earn it back. If I can ask one more about the quarterbacks, then Cardale's been in this situation before to come in. Uh, maybe a little bit unexpected as the backup. Um, what's different about maybe your confidence level in him for this start now that he's got 10 under his belt as opposed to Wisconsin? Well, night and day. You know, Cardell's, uh, plus he had a great week of practice last week. He's engaged. He handled everything like a man. You know, he threw for 300 yards a couple weeks ago, a 75% clip. He's 10-0 as a starter. That's uh, not, uh, not even a uh, hesitation. Front row middle, Dave. Coach, do you have any type of policy when a player's coming off suspension um, that he would not start his first game back, or is that up in the air? When, when JT comes sorry. when JT comes back off suspension, would he be eligible to, to start right away, or would just, do you have a policy where a player coming off suspension? Well, he's, uh, if he's good enough and if he earns that right, I haven't even gone that far yet. And a quick question about some of the wide receivers that are banged up. Paris Campbell, Dontre Wilson, Johnny Dixon, do you expect any of those guys will be able to help with the stretch run? Uh, Dontre had a procedure done to his foot. He's questionable for this week. Who's the other one? Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell. Uh, he's questionable. We'll find out today. More today. And Johnny Dixon. Johnny Dixon won't we'll play this week. I think he has a little uh, micro fracture into his knee, very close to the patella. So he's, it's going to be a couple of weeks. Uh, back left, Jared. Yeah, Urban, speaking specifically about quarterbacks, you have an opportunity here with, uh, with Cardell to move back into that role. The red zone production was a concern for you, and obviously Maryland, Penn State, JT, assume that role did a nice job for you. Is there, is there something <coughs> about looking at ways to maybe involve Braxton in that role this week? Well, we've had, but we're not there yet. It's still early in the week, so we're having those conversations now. Uh, second row left, Lori. Could you talk about players peaking at the right time all the time? Your players do, too. What do coaches do so that they are also at their best when they need to be in November and fall season? That's, I've never been asked that. That's a great question. Uh, I'm not sure. I just, you know, what do coaches do to be to peak at the right time? Wow. <laughs> Bill, <perhaps. laughs> that's a great uh, uh, thing. That's great for the leadership class. I think coaches are a product of the, that's a great question. It's a, it's a product of knowing who your personnel is and the meshing like our offensive staff right now, when you have transition of two coaches, um, the normal the normalcy is it takes a minute and that minute has gone by and I'm really pleased with the conversations and the execution of what goes on during game day. So that's, a, that's one way to make sure we're on point uh, and really understanding what your, I think coaches, uh, and we've all been there, including our staff, uh, many times where you, you, you don't put them in position to do what they can do very well. And that's what I see like our defensive staff are doing a very good job of doing what guys can do well. Offensive staff, obviously there's a new wrinkle now. We get a little issue that we're going to spend a lot of time on with the, uh, like I said, about the red zone. So just getting guys in position to do the right thing, uh, that they can do what they, their skill sets say they can do. And that, that takes an incredible amount of time because Every player is different. Michigan has been announced as a new kickoff. Matter to you? You like sticking with tradition and oh, being yeah. prepped for the next one? Yeah, year? I grew up watching that. I don't think I'm fine with worrying about this one right now, though. 
front row right. Tim? Yeah, Urban, uh, number one, uh, you, you were here in 86 or 87 when uh, when Earl Bruce had some situations he had to deal with and had to deal with immediately and stuff. As a coach, do you evolve into, you understand uh, nationally you've gotten some criticism for what went on down in Florida. You've addressed that in the past and stuff. But it seems like since, since you've been at Ohio State, you've been pretty, I don't know if quick's the right word, but to, uh, to execute the uh, uh, punishment, et cetera. Has there been an evolution with you in that regard, or has it always been etched in stone of what happens? This happens, this happens. No, I, I think. Uh, and that's playing out the fact that obviously uh, we were told that uh, JT was not subject to a, a uh, suspension based on uh, the school rules. Yeah, I, I, I unfortunately I've read some of the things said about our time down there, and yeah. now's not the time to, you know, whether it's exaggerated, I'm seeing these numbers show up that they just keep growing. Yeah. And, uh, but I'm not, you know, one's too many. And, but we've been, if, you're, if you do your homework and research, everybody's been suspended, you know, either suspended. Uh, the one thing that I look back on, if I've given too many second chances to people, and if I'm, my evaluation of that is I've probably continued to do it. Because if decisions aren't made, you know, public opinion, you don't make decisions with people's lives and livelihood. We've done the, you know, tried to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, here I don't see there's just as, you know, I've been with. There haven't been many, and we act quickly. You know, Gene's been tremendous help for me. It's, you know, what, what do you think, Gene? And it's a very clear conversation, and let's do the right thing. And you know, when it's a core value issue, then it's a really tough situation. It's a horrible mistake or a mistake, and you try to put up, you know, uh, some discipline so that mistake's not made again. And you know, I, but I see, you know, I see the advice from Gene, and like I've got a Florida Jeremy. And, I think we've done fine. I don't, mm -hmm. uh, now is not to go back. Yeah. We're, we're moving forward. And, uh, <coughs> disappointed happened. We, we did what we did. And uh, uh, we got to move forward. And <clears throat> does JT lose his captaincy? Uh, you know, I, I visited with some older players about that. My initial reaction was he might. And, you know, we just talked to some guys, but it was very strong with the leadership on the team to know I'm right. still in my own mind going through that. Uh, as of now, no. And and one other thing, Minnesota, obviously they lose Jerry Kill last week. They come within a half a yard. Mm -hmm. What do you expect from Minnesota on Saturday? I think they, they played their best game. They were very inspired. Played uh, tremendous in that game on both sides of the ball uh, against a very good team. So I, I think they're an excellent team. They're they're hitting their stride right now as well. Front row left, Doug. Urban, we know every coach has to deal with off-field stuff like this at times. How do you sort of view drunk drive and the, the the things that happen with players? Just the nature of that offense. You know, it's horrible. It's uh, well, obviously the first thing is make sure no one's hurt and find out exactly what happened. We educate you know, nonstop about domestic, about alcohol, about drugs. It's 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 out there. Uh, I've had to deal with it one other time, I believe, and it was. You know, it's just something that I, I go right to the administration because I want to find out, make sure we're doing right by the university first and then team second. Because obviously that's, a, you know, that's a, there's been some horrible things happening with drug driving. And how does this affect how you view JT Barrett? Tough. You know, he came over to my house and I love JT. I'm not ashamed to say that. He's like a child. He's like one of my favorite guys I've ever got to coach. He's, uh, you know, JT is going to have to deal with something that uh, he's never had to deal with. You know, when you say you're too short, you don't run fast enough, your arm strength's not good, you're an average quarterback, you can deal with that, just not work it. And it's a little bit like when a coach, you know, you're not a good coach, okay, you're not a good coach. When they start attacking who you are, especially people who don't know who you are, and I told him that, you know, that that's the toughest thing he'll ever have to deal with, is that now there's some questions who you are. And I imagine he's never, he's never had to deal with that, because JT's always been JT. And yes, he may be a little too short, his arm strength, maybe not, you know, that. He can deal with that. How do you deal with that? You work a little harder. Uh, how do you deal with, you know, what is it, 20 years of doing right and 30 seconds of doing wrong, uh, or three minutes, whatever it was, that's real though. And that's something he's going to have to deal with. And I'm, I'm going to try to help him. We all are going to try to help him because that's going to be a, that's, that's, the, that's the toughest thing we'll have to deal with as far as protecting his name. And do you view this more as guys make mistakes, or does this lead you to maybe question his decision making? Well, first, his question is decision making. And 
find it, then I, find, I want to find out exactly what happened. I want to monitor them very closely and uh, use it as an education opportunity for our players to. Back row left. Marty? Coach, you just kind of noted your message to JT. What was his message to you? When you walked into your Devastation. House? I, well, he came to my house on uh, whatever day that was the next day. Uh, blown away, devastated. You know, uh, all his concern was about the team, as you can imagine. That's, ever since I've known JT, all of it was about the team. And we went through the quarterback stuff about who's going to play quarterback. He coach up by and just want to help this team. And he feels like he lets the team down. How did you learn the news? A uh, text message at about uh, 6 a.m. on uh, whatever day that was, I guess Saturday morning. How did you react? I told Shelly, I said, did I go up? I actually called the person who texted me and I said, did I read this right? And uh, then what about the next six hour deal with it? Front row middle, Bill. All my questions. Um, JT had the, uh, the incident last year um, that was, I think, came of it. Um, does that come, the combination of that and then this year? make you again add to the questions? Yes, yeah, I, I had chats with him about that last year and then this year and, and uh, those chats will, will not discontinue. And also his family involvement understands that was the current starting quarterback at uh, Ohio State or the quarterback at Ohio State. But all of us here all the standards and decision making I think was brought up earlier. And did he have did, did you ask him to give you any explanation for why he did what he did? Saturday. Oh, sure. I'm not going to share that with you guys. But yeah, he, obviously, he didn't think he was above the, he felt fine. And uh, I, I will tell you that. He said, I didn't even think across my mind because I didn't, I'm not, I don't drink much. And, and I think not, I'm not sure now is the place to have that conversation. But yeah, I said, why would you do this? And, and he said, Coach, it didn't even cross my mind because I didn't have that much. And I was fine. And I was helping someone else out to give him a ride home. Oh, that's not what he wasn't. He left to give somebody else a ride. Yes. And Cardell was was the one who he was released to Cardell's care. Was Cardell with him at the no. time? So Cardell came and picked him up. Yes. Last couple questions. Uh, far right, Clay? That was it about you to know more about the circumstance. Does that speak to their friendship? Is that the room? Cardell and JK? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's obviously they're very close. Yeah. And last question, Ari? Coach, you mentioned that you haven't had discussion yet about Braxton's role, but um, A, is he healthy enough to assume that role if you guys feel like you might need him, and even if he's a backup, and, and who in your mind right now is something were to happen to Cardale, is Braxton your guy at quarterback, or do you go to one of the other guys? Uh, as of right now, it would be Braxton. Uh, we're going to we're right in the middle of those conversations, it's, it's, uh, but there's no question that he's our he's a number two quarterback. So when he's been involved in just you know the progression of learning the wide receiver position, is it would it be very hard for him to get back into the swing of things? Was he going to work out quarterback in practice? And no, I think almost every, every game he has a package of quarterback play. And so, you know, as far as the mechanics of, you know, getting the play, we're at home too, which is good. You know, getting the play to the, you know, it's not just running around the end. It's, it's getting everybody lined up, getting the play, getting the formation and all that. And that's the thing when you try to say, hey, let's, let Zeke do some direct snaps. That's hard. Remember last year we did that to Jalen as well. Braxton, it's not no issue. It's just a matter of fact. He can throw, how prepared is he to throw? So we're going to work that this week as well and get him ready to go. Coach, thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, sir.